This is Algebra Lesson 3-8, Unions and Intersections of Sets. A union of two or more sets is the set that contains all the elements of the sets, both sets. The element, the symbol for a union is a, what looks like a large capital U. To find the union of two sets, list the elements that are in either set or in both sets. So if this, if we were to recon, uh, recognize this uh, as a picture, it looks a little bit like this. To move these in the middle here. Make this one slightly bigger. Now I'm going to move it so it's like this. There we go. So I have uh, this is this would be A union B. Where this is A, and this is B. The union would be everything that's in A everything that's in B, and where they intersect right here is where they both have things in common. That would also be part of the set. So A union B is all of the elements in, in set A, all of the elements in set B, and all of the elements that both set A and set B share. An intersection is similar to a union, except for an intersection of two or more sets is the set of elements that are common to every set. An element is in the intersection if it belongs to all of the sets. The symbol for intersection looks like an upside down U. So if I was to represent this visually, it takes me a minute to draw, draw these really nice and neat here. Just slightly bigger. This one's slightly bigger. Want it to overlap like this. There we go. So this would be uh, the union. Okay, this would be set. Let's just <clears throat> let's call this set U. And if this was A here and this is B over here, this shaded region in the middle here would be A union B. A excuse me, A, A intersection B. So the intersection is only what they have in common. Okay? Disjoint sets are sets that have no elements in common. The intersection of a disjoint set is what we call the empty set. Okay? Visually, that looks like this. Set here. here. Notice they have nothing in common. They don't cross or anything. This would be set A. This would be B. They have nothing in common. This is still U. Okay. The empty set looks like this. It looks like a bracket with nothing in it. Or sometimes it's a zero which is, which is crossed. That's what's called the empty set. So those three definitions are really important because they're going to be helpful for you to understand this lesson. So let's look at something. It says write sets P and Q below in roster form. What is P union Q? Okay, roster form means as the numbers. Okay, versus word form. Okay, there's a there's a roster form, and then there's something we call set notation as well. Remember we talked about that earlier. So if we have roster form here because we're going to work with um, roster form is to list it all in braces, if you remember, and set builder is to kind of explain it. So in roster form here, P is equal to the all values of X, where X is the whole numbers less than 5. That happens to be set builder notation that they wrote it in, so we're going to write it in roster form. Q is all values of Y such that Y is an even natural number less than 5. So if we want P union Q, that means everything that's in P and everything that's in Q. So let's think about what, what, is, in, what is in P. Let's talk about what is in P. P is the whole numbers less than 5. So our whole numbers less than 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Oops, less than 5. Does not include 5, sorry. 5 is not less than 5. 5 is equal to 5. Okay. Q 
is all the even natural numbers less than 5. Remember, natural numbers are your counting numbers. They don't include 0. Whole numbers include 0. So Q is only 2 and 4. So P union Q, P union Q, would be everything that's in P plus everything that's in Q. Well, if you look at it, everything that's in Q is already in P, so we list, literally only have to list P, right? because 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So P union Q is the set of 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 in roster notation. All right, so if we look at number 2, set X is uh, X such that X is a whole number less than 15. Set Y is all values of Y. That is an odd integer. And Z is a multiple of 4. Okay? So it might be helpful if we understood all these things. Okay? Set X is all your whole numbers less than 15. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, etc. So I'll just rewrite that to 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, dot, dot, dot. Okay? Y is an odd integer. Okay, so that means y is a positive or negative whole number. Okay, so positive or negative whole numbers. And z is a multiple of 4. Okay, could it be negative? It doesn't say whether it's positive or negative. So it could be anything that's, that's, ends, you know, that's divisible by 4. So knowing that, we want to find what is x intersect z. Okay x intersect z is x is all the whole numbers less than 15 and z is all your multiples of 4 right so numbers that are less than 15 but are also multiples of 4 is what we need numbers less than 15 which are also multiples of 4 so if i think about that uh, 14 is is less than 15 but it's not a multiple of 4 13 is less than but it's not a multiple of 4 12 is 12 is definitely a multiple of 3, and it's a, I mean, a multiple of 4, and it's less than 15, so 12 would work. Okay. 11 doesn't, 10 doesn't, 9 doesn't, but 8 does. 7 is not a multiple of 4, 6 is not a multiple of 4, 5 is not a multiple of 4, but 4 is a multiple of 4. Okay. Okay. Whole numbers, okay. 0 is not a multiple of 4, so we're done. So if we want to write in roster notation, x union z that will equal and I always put them in order smallest to largest 4 8 and 12 now if I want y excuse me uh, y intersect z okay not union intersection y union or intersect z so y is all your positive and negative odd integers, and z is a multiple of 4. I do not know a single multiple of 4. That is also odd. So if I look at y intersect z, they have to, they have to fit both criteria. It has to be an odd integer, and it has to be a multiple of 4. There is no odd number that's a multiple of 4. Therefore, this would be the empty set. Right, so you can leave it as that, or you can do the null set that way. Okay, you can draw Venn diagrams. That's what I drew as uh, pictures for your beginning vocabulary words. Those are called Venn diagrams to solve problems involving relationships between sets. Okay, so we have three friends are learning new languages. Draw a Venn diagram to represent the union and intersections of these sets. Which language to all do, do all three friends have in common? As you say, do all three friends have in common? Okay, so Matt is learning Spanish, German, and Italian. Rob is learning Spanish and German, and Jane is re learning Russian, Chinese, and Spanish. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a nice big rectangle. I need three circles here. There we go. Three circles, and they intersect. All three circles intersect. We have Matt, we have Rob, and we have Jane. Each circle is going to represent a person. This would be Matt's circle. Let's make this Rob's circle. And let's make this one down here Jane's circle. So Matt is learning Spanish and German and Italian. 
Okay. So let's let's do some uh, abbreviations because I think that's going to be easier. S is going to be equal to Spanish. Let's let G equal German. I equals Italian. R will equal Russian. C is going to equal Chinese. Now, is there anything all three of them have in common? Well, if you look at it, Matt has Spanish, Rob has Spanish, Jane also has Spanish. Right? Which means I'm going to have to put Spanish right here because that's where all three of them have something in common. They all three share Spanish. Okay? And I didn't draw my circles very well, so I'm going to redo these circles because I need them to be bigger so that I can actually see these things here. So let me redraw those really quickly. Let's make this slightly bigger. Circle, circle, circle. There we go. So we have Matt, we have Rob, we still have Jane down here. They all three have Spanish. Well, well the only place where all three circles intersect is right there. So that's going to be Spanish. Notice how Matt and Rob both have German. Okay, so Matt and Rob both have German in common. The only place where, here's Matt's circle here, here's Rob's circle here, the only place where both of those circles intersect that does not intersect with Jane's is right here. So German would go there. Okay. Um, I see Jane has Russian and Chinese, but uh, Matt nor Rob have Russian and Chinese. Okay. So she's going to have Russian down here and Chinese down here because those are the only two languages she doesn't share with anyone. Okay. And then, of course, we look here and we say, see that Matt has Italian that he doesn't share with anybody. I notice there's nothing here that Jane and Rob have in common that they don't have in common with Matt. And then Jane and Matt doesn't have anything in common that doesn't also have in common with Rob. All, right? All three of them share Spanish, but and Matt and Rob share German, but Matt and Jane don't share any language that they don't already share with Rob. So that would be a Venn diagram. Okay. And it says, which language do all three friends have in common? As they obviously have, they, both, they all have Spanish in common. All righty. You can use Venn diagrams to show the number of elements in the union or the intersection of sets. This is where it gets a little bit more difficult for people because it's hard for some people to understand this. It says, of 125 students in the fifth grade, some have music on Tuesday, some have art on Tuesday, and some have both classes on Tuesday. 68 students have music on Tuesday, and 33 have both classes on Tuesday. How many have art on Tuesday? Okay, so let's, let, let's do this. Let's let x equal... Uh, music only, uh, music. Let's let y equal art. Okay? Because I think it's going to be easier than writing the words music and art in my Venn diagram. Okay, so we're looking at music and art. So we just need two circles that intersect. Like so. So this is going to be x and this is going to be y. Okay, so out of 125 students, I'm going to put 125 in the corner because that's got to be, everything has to add up to 125. If we look at this, it says some have music on Tuesdays, some have art on Tuesdays, and some have both on Tuesdays. 68 students have music on Tuesdays and 33 have both classes on Tuesdays. So we know here that 33 has to be in the middle because they have both music and art on Thursday, on Tuesdays. So if 68 have music, okay, and 33 have both, we need to subtract that to figure out which ones have only music. Because if you have music and art, you're the 33, those are part of the 68. Okay, so if I take 68 and subtract 33, I have 35. So 35 people have music only. means that would go right there. Okay. 
And if you have 125 students total and 68 have, have art and music, so we take 68 away from that, take 125 and subtract 68, you're going to get 57 that have, that have uh, so 57 have art only. So we're going to put a 57 here. And the last thing you should do is you should double check and make sure this adds up. So if I take 35 plus 33 plus 57, they better equal 125, which it does. So therefore, we must have done this correct. Okay. So the question asks, how many have art on Tuesday? Well, if you want to look at art on Tuesday, art was Y. Art only is 57. Art and music is 33. So if you add the two of those together, you have 90 students that have art on Tuesday. And that's how you can use a Venn diagram to solve for things that, that you didn't absolutely think you could solve for to begin with. But you have to do a little addition and subtraction around with those problems. Okay. Recall that the graph of a compound inequality with the word and contains an overlap of the graphs and the, of the two inequalities that form the compound. Okay. Remember we talked about them there being between this number and this number because they overlap each other. And you can... You can think of the overlap as an intersection of two sets. Similar, similarly, you can think of the solutions of an OR inequality as the union of two sets. Okay? So an OR is a union, and an AND is an intersection. So what are the solutions of the absolute value of 2x minus 1 is less than 5? Write the solutions as either the union or the intersection of two sets. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is an absolute value inequality. The absolute value is isolated all by itself, which is what it's supposed to be. So we can set it up. This is a less than, so it's an and inequality. This is an and. So we set it up by saying, okay, 2x minus 1 is less than 5. Move my inequality symbol to the front. Move my number to the front, but make it negative. Now we solve this inequality. So I'm going to add 1, add 1, add 1. So you get negative 4 is less than 2x, which is less than 6. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is greater than negative 2, but less than 3. So x is literally between negative 2 and 3. Right? Since this is an and, this is an uh, intersection. Right? So this is an intersection. And we are going to write this in a set builder notation. So I will have, and I can, I can separate this. I think that might be easier to understand it. This can be written as two separate inequalities. x is greater than negative 2 and x is less than 3. Those are two different inequalities. If you read from the middle okay, going to the left, you get x is greater than negative 2. If you read from the middle going to the right, you get x is less than 3. So this is the intersection. So the, to write this in set builder notation, you're going to have all values of x such that x is greater than negative 2. Right, that's one part of it. And this is going to be the intersection, so we have to get it in a nice upside down capital U. And then you're going to have all values of x such that x is less than 3. That's what it would be in set builder notation. It is a, in an intersection of those two graphs. Okay, your closure question for this lesson. Explain the main difference between a union and an intersection of sets. What is the main difference between something that's a union and something that is an intersection?